So that being said, let's give a warm hand of applause for Miss Rashida Jones. Hey, girl. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for coming out tonight. Yeah, of course. This is Happy amazing. Oh, so, look at all the fans. You're so excited. Hi, guys. Like, let's take it in. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> nice turnout. God, it's such so a great nice. turnout. Now, you've had tons of roles in the past, the last of which was playing Anne on Parks and Rec. I just loved you in that role. But, I mean, after that show's end, you were definitely entitled to a break. I mean, what <laughs> kind of motivated you to return to TV so quickly? Was that kind of your master plan? No, it really wasn't. It really wasn't. It wasn't like, I have to get off Parks and get onto another show. <laughs> because Parks was such a... Singular experience, nothing will ever be it. Those people are my family. We made this thing together that's unmatched and I will never try again to match that. But I read the script that Steve Carell and his wife Nancy wrote and it was so stupid and so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I had no choice but to dive in. So were you the person that kind of Steve and Nancy had in mind for this? I mean, how did that, how did they reach out to you about the role? I know you had the office connection, but. They, they emailed me, but I just today, my paranoid mind was speculating that like, what if I, they just like BCC'd me and like 40 <laughs> other actresses would just wait. They're like, we wrote this part for you. Yeah, okay. But Fill that was not name the case. Here. No, I, I don't know. I don't think so, no. I think that they, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they did drag up other people before me. I don't know. I, I was it. just so happy. The minute I read the script, I was like, oh, no, yes, but no, but yes. It was just, <laughs> it's just my favorite kind of dumb humor. Okay, your favorite kind of dumb humor. I heard that you may or may not be a fan of Airplane. I mean, what about kind of your comedic sensibilities really come out with this project? You know, it's so funny because in doing it, none of them. But in, in watching it, all of them. But watching it and reading them, because when you when you actually do this kind of comedy, you got to just be on a cop show. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not, you know... I mean, you do sort of have to service the joke sometimes. Sometimes there's props. Sometimes there's animals. Sometimes there's costume changes in the middle of sentences. But for the most part, acting-wise, I have to kind of keep it pretty straight. Okay. Yeah. And when you were reading the script, like, what element of it really stood out to you as being like... You know, I may want to write or I might want to do all this other stuff, but like this is what I really got to do right now. I mean, I think it was, it was first thing off the bat. The first scene of the first episode is me, me, my stunt <laughs> double, just basically just, you know, like warming up and getting ready for work and then just like destroying her apartment. Just like, <laughs> kung, you know, kung fu kicks and like knocking down her bookshelf. Wait, I do that every morning. That's not... You do? Yeah, no. <laughs> You're getting your aggression out before you leave your house. And then and then as I leave my house, there's like all these types of like servicemen, like a plumber and like a contractor being like, you go Angie Tribeca, good job. Just like, I just, there, it just made me laugh so hard. That's awesome. <laughs> now, okay, Angie Tribeca. Who is Andrew Tribeca? Like, who is this a chick? Angie Tribeca is a very committed detective of the LAPD and um, you know she's she, like most great cops she's got a tough exterior and a soft exter interior that she's really pushed far away because she's had some th traumatic things happen to her in the past if you watch the show you'll find out what mm -hmm. but because of it she's kind of shut down she's committed herself wholeheartedly to work and she has this partner Jay Giles who slowly but surely kind of breaks her down so what is similar or dissimilar about Angie given the other characters that you've played? She I mean, I guess I guess this is sort of the ultimate straight guy. I, I do end up playing maybe the least insane person in, <laughs> in an insane group of people, like the affable friend, the reasonable girlfriend, those kinds of things. But this is like to the extreme. I'm sort of like the one who doesn't think anything is funny. I mean, Angie Tribeca does not understand the comedy of the show Angie Tribeca. Hmm. And I guess you mentioned it kind of being a little, well, I mentioned it being a little bit like Airplane because that's a similarity that I drew. But I mean, is this like absurdist? Is this slapstick? I mean... Yeah, I was trying to like think of what the actual genre is, but I don't know what it is. I guess it's all that stuff. It's sort of absurd. It's sort of slapstick. I guess it's sort of screwball because there's a lot of physical comedy. But... I don't know, it's like farcical a little bit. It's a spoof. I don't know. I feel like somebody's going to have to make up a whole genre, genre just for you. Uh, no, the genre's <laughs> been done. Airplane did it perfectly A++. But what is it called? I mean, I guess right. it's slapstick? Yeah, I don't know. But we can let the audience decide for themselves because I think we have a clip. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> 
I love that. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> I think what's awesome about that, though, is that it looks so easy. But I feel like there has to be a d degree of difficulty there. Is that true? Yeah, well, because that, even that scene alone, you know, I mean, I can't reach that jar. <laughs> so there's a lot of, like, fake, you know, there's a lot of cuts and cutaways and somebody standing up there and they hand it to me and, you know... It's it's so technical. It's yeah. crazy technical. And I, I mean, and that being said, like you're basically executing the jokes. You're not allowed to laugh at them when you're filming. So I mean, did you ever have to be like, okay, break, like we, just because you're cracking up so hard. Sometimes I mean, it's unavoidable. Yeah, it's an occupational hazard. <laughs> it's not a bad one. And I think what's fun about what we just saw too is that you're flipping a lot of tropes on their head, right? Like you have the stupid boss and you have just, I mean, this weird chemistry with your coworker. I mean, how did you decide like what kind of, I don't know, tropes or kind of standard cop show themes you were gonna tackle? But there's so many good ones yeah. and, they, and they just keep coming, right. you know? And actually Nancy the other day was talking about how she was watching an interrogation scene and it's like as they got closer to the, to the you know, the confession, the music was like just swelling and swelling. Was it dun dun? <laughs> no, but that was, that's a good one. That's, there's a lot of like beats and Live weird order. screaming. Yeah. Um, but, she, but she was saying, wouldn't it be funny if we did an interrogation scene and the music just swelled so loud that you just, we stopped being able to hear each other talk? <laughs> there's just like constant, if you watch those shows, there's yeah. just so many things that, they, that we rely upon. It's why we watch the show that it's like so easy to make fun of. Yeah. I mean, I think I basically embarrassed myself in front of however many hundred people are here by doing the law and order sound. Don't, don't. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, we're even. Do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you watch cop shows? There's so many. Yeah. Bones, CSI. Yeah. Law and order. <laughs> I mean, it is so good. Yeah. Also, I can't not watch it. There's is something that? so safe about like the, the structure of it. You know where it's going. Yep. You know you know, what, which part's law, which part's order. You know nothing about the people's lives. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess, what do you think, I mean, just in terms of the other cast members, what has that dynamic been like for you? I mean, you've talked a little bit about the challenges for you, but um, did you all know each other beforehand? I knew or? Hayes before. Okay. We kind of knew each other from around. Um, and who else did I know? No, I didn't know anybody else. I got, I mean, I got super lucky. We have like a, pretty stellar comedic cast. Jerry Burns, I was just a fan of. Oh, cool. He's so great. Alfred Molina's on our show? I love him. How? <laughs> he's like he's like universally celebrated actor of like, like theater actor. and movies. And I'm like, every time I show up to work, I'm like, why are you here? What are you doing here? But I bet he has the most fun, though. He does. And he's the most delightful person. It makes sense to me now knowing him. Like, this is his sense of humor. Oh, okay. If it tickles you, like, you're, you're going to want to do it. You're going to want to watch it, you know? That's awesome. And I guess I want to talk a little bit about the structure of the show. So are you, like, solving a case week by week? Or do you have, like, one big case you solve throughout the season? How's that going to work? We are this first season one. We, were, we thought we'd just keep it, like, very procedurally. Mm -hmm. Not a word. Um, and just have a case, one stupid case okay. a week that you will probably be ahead of us on. <laughs> Which, if you're not, that's on you because <laughs> the titles are literally the person who did it. So, oh. <laughs> um, And then, you know, season two, we sort of like, we do a little bit more of like, over like global stories, um, personal stories. Global stories like Andy Tribeca, Africa. Like, what? <laughs> no, I mean what? more like 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 thematic global stories where we're like okay. we, you know we there's a kind of an ongoing thing that we're that you know we're building to something. I don't know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I guess do you They're have not self contained any, the episodes? Do you have any input in the types of cases like again Law and Order SVU reference like they take from the headlines, right? right. How do you decide like what's gonna make the cut? I specifically requested to go undercover um, at a quinceanera. No way. Because I wanted to wear that dress. <laughs> Was it frilly? Uh, tell me it was it's frilly. It's so pink and so frilly, and it's like <laughs> it's like the size of the stage. So it's, it's like the one giant. I wore. Did you did you have a kid? I did. <laughs> I did. I did. So it was a pink. No, it might have been maroon, but was same it difference. giant? Was it like a giant hoop? You know, this is about you and your experience. I, know, I don't want to embarrass myself any further. <laughs> <laughs> this is about you, the celebrity. So, <laughs> so pink frilly dress. I mean, is there a, a chase scene where you're wearing all these layers? There's a dance scene. There's like Seriously. I think somebody might come out of the bottom of my dress at a certain point. That seems totally appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems like 
we've had a lot of fun on the show, though. I mean, what's the most fun scene that you've had? I heard that there may have been an experience with a man's diaper. Yeah, I've Tell fun, I don't know if fun is the word I would <laughs> use, but definitely the most interesting, maybe the low point of my career, or the high point, depending on the way you look at it. Dave Kackner, who's hilarious, you guys probably know, he was on The Office, mm-hmm. and he was in Anchorman. He's so funny. He, uh, I had to change his diaper, and he's like 6'3", so I, had to, I like did a, the thing where like I swing the baby legs here, pull them up, grab the diaper, powder his bottom... It brought us close. <laughs> That's so fun, though. But I mean, that brings up a good question. You have some really good, well, I'll lead in with a statement. You have some great co-stars in this show. Yeah. James Franco, guest stars, rather. Yeah. I mean, how do you go about picking them? I heard your parents are in the show. So can you tell yeah. us about the process of cherry picking we people? We went through a very long selection process okay. for my parents. And then <laughs> finally, they just they just did the best job, my did real parents. Did you bribe them? Like, <laughs> I'll take you out to dinner. I'll wash the dishes every night. I, I swear. I did a lot of begging on the show. <laughs> I did a lot of, like, begging and bargaining for, with, with the guest stars on the show. Okay. So... But, you know, that's it's the first season. It's hard to know what it's going to be like. And, you know, people did, did me some solids. Yeah. I owe them. I mean, Bill Murray yeah. uh, is a guest star. He's notoriously difficult to get a hold of. I mean, like, the myth in Hollywood is, like, he doesn't even have a phone number. Like, it's just ridiculous to get a hold of this guy. Like, talking to him, getting a hold of him is, like, basically getting a vision from Jesus. And somehow you got him on the show. I know that you started in a Very Merry Christmas recently. Yes. So you do have a We've kind spent of... some time together this year, this oh, past year. Okay. We're buddies. <laughs> awesome. So, you know, we. I was like, please, I want to be in your Christmas special and then come be on my show. So can you tell us about the episode that he's in? What is... I mean, he's such a great actor. It's basically the idea is I'm a workaholic Mm -hmm. and my boss tells me to take a day off and I meet this guy played by Bill Murray named Vic Deacons who works at a supermarket and uh, he's kind of like just checked out of life and he's like, you know, he's my sort of ghost of future is that what it's called? Ghost of future past or something? Future past? Does that sound weird? It's like a lot of words. I don't know. Uh, okay. okay, anyway, he's, <laughs> he's, he's like a foreshadowing of my future. Okay. Um, and we go like on a little date, and you know, he's kind of weird and kind of charming, and that's it. We had like a little kind of mini play, one act play together. That's <laughs> so, awesome. so cool. And I guess you do a lot of writing. You're, I mean, that's your other gig amongst your 10,000. Do you get to have direct input on like the scope of the show and the scripts? Like, do you pass back notes and back and forth? How yeah. does that work? I, Ira Ungerleiter, who's our amazing showrunner, he's <laughs> such, he's, I consider him a partner and collaborator. And he's, cool. I mean, I don't have to do anything to the scripts because they're great, mm-hmm. but he definitely like listens to me. You know. That's great. Well, I guess on that note, we have another fun clip to show all of you. <laughs> when you see a cl- that clip, what do you remember about the filming of that? Like, what kind of strikes? Just oh, trying like to that. remember all those names. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that runs like that. They're they're highly choreographed, you yeah. know, because we all have to be, we got to be like in pace with each other. So I, I just remember us, one of us messing up. It's like, you know, it's like you get to the end of the line, you almost get it. And you're like, damn, one of us <laughs> messes up. But um, yeah, that's, and then when you get that rhythm, it feels really good. You're like, oh, we did it. We got it right. It sounds <laughs> that's good. That's so awesome. I mean, clearly you got it right. That was incredibly funny. And then, oh, in the beginning, too, I remember having a really hard time flipping that coin backwards <laughs> into Hayes' hand. It's not that easy to do that backwards. No, to self. Try that after this. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you get a shave. Exactly. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. One of the first things that kind of caught my attention about this show is the format. So TBS is airing all 10 episodes within a 25-hour non-stop binge this Sunday. That's what I do with Netflix. Right. But that kind of binge model seems to now be working its way into broadcast for the first time. I yeah. mean, what can you tell me about that decision? I think it's really cool. I mean, nobody's done it before, and no. it's hard to think of things that nobody's done before, mm-hmm. ever. Um, and I think now, especially in this climate of TV, there's so many ways to watch TV. There's so many ways that people watch TV. And to give people the option to sort of watch it all in one go, I feel like is a, is a very bold move. And it's nice for them to support the show in that way. It's also like, listen, 
We're going to give you the episodes. Watch it however you want. You can binge. You can like chill out on the couch for five hours. Or you can watch it if you want. You can watch every week. But I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. <laughs> Let's say, though, that there are some of us in the crowd, you know, maybe me, that will be up for this binge. What, do you, what are your tips for surviving an anti tribeca binge? Definitely pee when you have to pee. Okay. That sounds I just, like a I, good plan. I, In general, that's like a life rule. <laughs> um, stay hydrated. What's it's your beverage connected. of choice? Like, what's Angie's beverage of choice? What should we be stocking up on on at Dwayne Reed? Like a nice, I feel like a nice, like, um, I don't know, maybe like an alcoholic beverage if it's you're like of age. O- I like an Ar- oaky Chardonnay if you're over 21. Ooh, could be Chardonnay, nice. yeah. <laughs> I like a Pinot Grigio myself. Okay, it's a little okay. lighter. All right, all right. Um, maybe, maybe some snacks. Pringles. Pringles, great. <laughs> I love corn nuts. Okay, okay. Um, popcorn. Yeah. Kettle corn, if you like that. Companion, is that necessary? No, right. No, I don't think yeah. so. Okay. Also, because I've talked to some people who've watched the, the binge watch the show by themselves, and they feel stupid for laughing alone, but you might want to laugh alone because you might be embarrassed at what you laugh at. <laughs> I mean, in front of your partner. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last show that you binge watched? I watched Making a Murderer. <gasps> Me too. Isn't that good? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Somebody just had a huge reaction to yeah. Front Row. And it wasn't me. Yeah. What, what do you think? Did he do it? You don't think don't so? Think- Did you see Jody though, recently? Hot Did mess. you see that? She's- no, but she just came out and she, said... She's like trying to escape? Like she was yes. saying, right? Like he coerced but she was, her to escape. me, the most reliable, grounded character. I'm like grounded. devastated. More than, yes, more than anybody else. <laughs> I was devastated. Yeah. The rat poison? I don't. I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's just a bombshell. Yeah. You guys who don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> making a murder is very good. <laughs> Educational, informative, and interesting. Yeah. Also in the crime genre, kind of like the show. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Just like this show. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess after the binge is said and done this Sunday, then I guess in two weeks you're going to be showing season two of the show. Like you go right into it. It might be a little longer than okay. that. Okay. I think they're going to kind of like see what's up, how people okay. feel, but. They will start to show this show regularly, the season one regularly, okay. starting next week. So if you don't want to binge watch it and you do want to put yourself on a disciplined diet, you can watch <laughs> it every week live. I don't know. Nobody does that anymore. but Heaven forbid. Yeah. No, but this is a sh- good show to do it with if, no matter what. Yeah. But I guess, I mean, given that there's so many TV choices right now, what do you think N.D. Tribeca adds to the television landscape? I mean, for me, it's a awesome kick-ass brown girl who's kind of having fun and not apologizing, but... I like that. I like that. Let's go with that. Yeah, but what do you think? I mean, what's um, your hope? No, that's great. I mean, I think, you know, there's there really isn't... This represents something that's not on TV right yeah. now in, in IMHO, to add to my little run. <laughs> but, um, you know, I feel like we've... I, I've been very lucky to be a part of a couple shows that, you know, have been in this sort of, like... Single co- single camera comedy style where it's kind of mockumentary. It's very intimate, um, and it has a lot of heart, and that's great. This is not that show. Um, it is there's not really heart. It's mm-hmm. just kind of it's like a lot of jokes, and I feel like it's just it's just meant for pure entertainment. I and there, I don't know. There's something right now. The wor- you every time you turn on the news, you're upset. Yep. So this is hopefully a tiny bit of an antidote for that. I mean, I think that's a great segue into some questions from the audience. Who's up for asking Rashida a question? Hi. Hi. I adore you. Thank you so much for being here. I adore you, too. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I think one thing that you and I have in common is our love for Sarah Bareilles. And I know that you directed her music video, Brave. I was just wondering if you had any future aspirations for more directing, maybe even an episode of Anti Tribeca. If that was anything you're interested I in. I do, and I actually, like, I, I will thank Sarah publicly because she forced me to direct that video. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never directed. She was like, who cares? Just do it. You'll be fine. Such a nice, that's such a, like, good girlfriend thing to do. Um, but I just recently co-directed a video for a song that's on my nephew's album that I am featured on called Flip and Rewind. Uh, you need I to did. watch on YouTube if you haven't already. It definitely sucked up at least... Like 20 minutes of my day today. <laughs> <laughs> That's not too bad. I've got to work. That's like four times. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I co-directed that with Will McCormick, who's my writing partner. It's a throwback uh, love letter to the 90s, which is my favorite decade so far. So far. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I would love to direct an episode. I think this year, I think we were just really trying to like set the show. And I, I was feeling like I just wanted to focus on trying to get this character down. But I, I would love to direct. It's so 
fun. And thank you, Sarah Borellis, again. Sorry. Um, I heard that you're going to be writing Toy Story 4. Is that true? I have been writing on that for the past couple years. Um, they, they've pushed the release date to 2018. And, you know, Pixar, those movies are a very long process. But, yeah, it's been kind of amazing. <laughs> Hi. Hi, hi, Rashida. My name's Kadar. Hi. I'm kind of uh, sad that you mentioned Flip and Rewind before I could tell everybody Aww. else about it. I'm sorry. But I watched it. I love it. I posted it on Instagram. Thank Got you. Got thousands of likes. Um, my question is, I know you did that from a nostalgic standpoint, but do you think that at some point you might transcend that into your uh, television maybe even movie capabilities, like as far as maybe adapting an idea like that and trying to bring it into sitcom mode or movie? Because I think people need to know about that, like something yeah. like, li like Listen Up, you know, yeah. kind of vibe. I mean, I definitely, I came up in the 90s. I was a teenager and a young adult in the late 90s, and I was like lucky enough to be in New York and like hanging out, you know, with listening to like Uptown MCA and like, going to Club USA and everybody was cool and still alive and rappers were still alive and got along. And I feel like that was a really important time in the history of music and hip hop and culture. And I don't know, there's something like every time I see a friend from that era, all we want to do is talk about that era. Because to me, that's like, I am, I am who I am because of R&B and hip hop in the 90s. So yeah, I think it'd be great. I mean, it's so great. Like, Especially now, I feel like there's a new show on VH1 called The Breaks. Then there's Empire. I don't. I haven't seen that show, but I just. I think that's like in everybody's consciousness right now. Okay, I'll try. I mean, I like that dare. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a chance you could sing an Andrew Tribeca or do like a '90s flashback, like your character goes back in time? I feel like I feel like I feel good about my representation of the <laughs> '90s for now. We'll okay. see. Okay. But I do. I sing in one episode. I sing like a really, really silly kind of like cabaret number. Oh, awesome! About melons and just a lot of like sexual innuendos. Standard pop fair. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, speaking of the 90s, uh, I did find a picture of you on Google. I'm not sure if it's uh, no. way back when, but it's a picture of you and Tupac. And I did a little research, and you wrote him a letter. Can you just uh, talk about uh, that experience and what it was like to meet him? Yeah, well, I, uh, I wrote a letter to the Source magazine um, about an interview they did with Tupac. He said some kind of disparaging things about interracial families. And... Um, I was 16 and very preco precocious, and so I wrote a letter just kind of, you know, telling, just basically saying, who do you think you are? How dare you? <laughs> my dad paved the way for you, all this stuff, whatever. Anyway, it resulted in him meeting my family, and he, he and my dad, you know, kind of hashing it out, him apologizing, and him being incredibly close with our family, and I was very lucky to know him. He was um, a, one of a kind. Hi, Rashida. Um, I love you. So, Thank um, you. I love you, too. <laughs> my, qu <laughs> my question is, um, if you could have played any other character on Parks and Rec other than Anne, who would it have been? Ooh, Ooh good one. Councilman Jam? <laughs> such a good... I mean, Glazer is a comedy legend, so nobody could play it better, but that's like a... I just want to say you've been jammed. <laughs> fun, fun catchphrase. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, can we be best friends? <laughs> I mean, what's your schedule like? Where do you I'm, live? Yeah. So, I have so many questions to yeah. ask you before Any, I can agree upon that. But let's try. Yeah. Let's, okay. let's start with this. What's your name, first of all? I'm Gabby. Gabby. Yeah. Okay. That, that, that's a beginner. Nice beginner. To I'm meet Rashida. You. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Oh. <laughs> let's, wor let's work on it. Yeah. Let's take baby steps. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So in an industry where women are often placed into one box, typically, where do you find the inspiration to navigate the various different paths of your career? You know, I've never felt handicapped by being a woman. It's just not anything I was ever taught to feel by my family. And I feel very lucky for that. And when I look at the outside world and I see that it's not necessarily reflected um, in a more kind of collective way it, it really bums me out but I mean I think the best I can do is just is to be kind of loud and you know be vocal I think there's some real real 
inequality problem still in Hollywood, and it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, there's no reason it should be that way, um, and it's going to take a couple real bold leaders, people who can actually change things to, 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 to just change them, and people are going to stomp their feet and say it's unfair, but who cares? Like, it's, it, I'm, it's time. I'm damn sick of it. Like, women should have parity. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and then I think the rest of the world will follow because Hollywood sets standards. That's what we do. Like, that's what we should be doing. But anyway, point is, there's so many great women leaders already that I look up to and, and people like Amy Poehler and, you know, Tina Fey and Amy Schumer and Kerry Washington. And There's just, like, great women out there who are just not afraid to just do what they're doing and... Don't care. You just have to not care. <laughs> and be loud. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much for coming out on a Friday and My spending pleasure. time with thank us. Thank you guys for spending time with me. It's so this nice. It's been so much fun.